We're really doing this here. Welcome to Monoplickies, a series that I created to make up for lost time by reviewing whatever monogram film I have in my collection that only five people are gonna watch because god the algorithm only takes nicely to my shorts for some reason. We'll just jump to 1934 with Neath the Arizona Sky starring John Wayne. The plot's simple. Sam Black is after Nina after her mother died, so a noble cowboy named Chris Morell vows to get the girl to her father safely. Pretty standard beast movie stuff here. I was actually hesitant on whatever or not I would include this film since it bore a different name for the production company. But lo and behold, I would say that I would review every monogram film I have in my collection, and it might just include the ones distributed by them, such as Return of the Ape Man, if I could get my hands on that film before it goes out of print. The issue is that I have with this film is that it's too boring for my tastes considering there's no music outside of the beginning and the ending of the film. But you also need to remember that this is before all studios would get a hold of where to put music in their film. Hence why there's no musical score or credit in this film. You would basically have to wait until something like The Ape to find something like this. The only two actors I can properly give credit for their lines is John Wayne and a child actor named Shirley Jean Rickett. The latter of which was involved in the first sound incarnation of Hal Roach's art gang shorts released under Educational Pictures. Great name, by the way. As for John Wayne... Seriously, man, you've got the wrong man. You need to remember that this was released four years after the big trail disaster of 1930, to which John Wayne would be relegated to B-movie leads and supporting cast to still 1939's Stagecoach. And even then, he was still on a contract for Republic Pictures. Both actors do a fine job at doing their roles, but honestly, I don't understand how I would even find myself liking this kind of western. There's just not really much to work off of, other than the fact that you should buy this film if you want to know John Wayne's B-movie heritage. Otherwise, stay away. 